Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and we are up and live. We got Vedanta Sproston, who is manning the controls today as a guest, because Dustin's on vacation. And so uh, if we get a little hiccupy, it's because we have a little bit of newbie in here. <laughs> but hey, it's, uh, I've done this a couple times. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but this is all new equipment, though. But happy, uh, for those of you in the United States, happy day after Thanksgiving. We had a really good one here. And uh, um, I'm stuffed, stuffed full of turkey and stuffing and all kinds of good stuff. And uh, but today we're going to do kind of a short, a short one. Uh, I was going through some images from Facebook and I'm part of a I follow a, um, a gorilla group uh, from a zoo in Germany that I, I've, I've been following for a while. And they posted some really beautiful uh, gorilla images that I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, but I thought it might be kind of fun to sit and just talk and draw gorillas because I'm, I'm actually going to be doing an ape course coming up soon and uh but anyway uh the big thing is it's friday after thanksgiving it is black friday it is the big ah! biggest shopping day of the year i know it's crazy and so of course we've got uh we've got stuff uh for you guys so if you go to my desktop real quick vedanta um, we've got three courses that are, uh, that are in pre-order right now. We have been cranking out new courses. Um, you know, it's always been our, our, our drive and our goal to create as much content for you guys as we can throughout the year. And I think our goal this year was eight. You can correct me if I'm wrong, Nick. I think we had a, a goal of eight new courses this year, which we achieved. Um, first we got sculpting in clay and that's actually going to be available uh, to purchase um, at the uh, later on today, sculpting in clay with Tony Cipriano, um, but you can still get it now for fifty percent off. But all three of these courses you can get in pre-order at fifty percent off. Sculpting in clay will be available later on today. We're very close to having it all done, um, and then we just got done uh, shooting, and Nick is in the middle of editing uh, animal character design with David Coleman. I've known David Coleman for years. And um, we worked together at Disney. Uh, David's worked all over all over Hollywood for different companies. And he's one of the best animal character designers I know. He and I kind of have kindred spirits. We both love animals. We both love designing them. And I thought it would be great to bring in someone else with a, with a, a fresh eye on animal character design. I've already got a course out, but we thought it'd be great to have David as well. And so David uh, put together a really beautiful course for us, all done traditionally. So it's all done on paper, which is really, really cool. So I think you guys will enjoy that. Once again, that's Animal Character Design, and that is available at 50% off. And then once again, my old friend Chuck Williams. Chuck and I have been buddies for 31 years, and uh, we've directed together. We've produced together. And, uh, and Chuck is an expert at getting your ideas uh, out there and pitched. Uh, he's in the business now as a producer, and he's got a lot, a, a lot to say uh, as far as advice goes for uh, the business of pitching and getting your ideas out there. So he's got a brand new course that we're pulling together right now. Dustin's in the middle of editing it and it is how to pitch your ideas. This is a big one for anyone coming out of school. One of the most common questions that we get uh, from young people is how do I get my ideas to other studios? A lot of people have ideas and they want to know how do I get them out there? Well, this course will help you do that. So it's very, very cool in that sense. So once again, that's three different courses at 50% off that are available. Uh, well, the, it, it's all, all weekend all, and, and into next week. So go ahead and get in there and get those courses while you can at 50% off. And then next, I've got this right here. We're going to stay on the, stay on the, uh, there we go. We've got four courses. This is our Black Friday sale. This is a special holiday price, and uh, we'll probably carry it through the weekend. But we've got four courses that are at their lowest prices ever. So we've got character design, uh, my character design, my acting for animation, my digital painting and procreate, and then the art of the storyboard with Lyndon Ruddy. Uh, once again, Lyndon, uh, for those of you that don't know, um, is a great friend of mine that uh, has storyboard. We've uh, I, I was directing a movie when we hired Lyndon, and I was blown away by his storyboarding uh, abilities and his skill and his uh, just amazing what he does. And so we asked him to put together a course, and he did. And it's been a hugely popular course for us. So it's The Art of the Storyboard with Lyndon Ruddy. 
uh, digital painting and procreate with me, character design with me, and acting for animation uh, with me. All of those are 15 bucks a piece. We've never had them that low. This is our big Black Friday sale today. So um, these are hugely popular courses at the lowest prices we've ever had them at. So go check those out. Once again, go to creatureartteacher.com and you can get all that stuff. So um, I think I think we're ready to dive in. I've got all that out of the way. And uh, what do you think, Vedanta? Yeah, I think that sounds like a good idea. A good idea. So this is this is one of the images I pulled up. I just thought this was such a cool kind of haunting image because, I mean, we think of animals as something being separate from us. Like the, so many people think of humans as this separate thing and then it's the rest of the animal kingdom. I've never really thought that way, but so many people do. But you look at this image right here and you can just see the soul, the humanity, the everything that we think is unique in us, um, you can see in this image in the eyes of this of this gorilla. And um, and I just love that image. And so I kind of wanted to do my own interpretation of it. And I thought that would be fun to do with you guys today. So without further ado, adieu. 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 Adieu, adieu. I am going to, I'm actually getting a little raspy. I'm going to go, uh, I might jump up and grab a soda water real quick. Uh-oh. Um, you know what that means. Burpee, burpee? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Let me file open. I'm grabbing uh, a soda water. I'll actually back. file new. Oh, you'll grab it? Yep. Oh, thank you. Uh, let, let's do this. I've been doing some really fun animation, by the way, too. I'm really excited to get it out to you guys. Um... It's going to take a few weeks, uh, but it's been some really fun uh, animation with uh, my character, Miss Violet, the bulldog. And uh, it's going to be really, really funny and very entertaining. I'm having a blast creating it. But let's, uh, let's, I'm going to do this square so we can, we can get it on the Instagram. Let's see, you know, you know, you know. Okay. Oh, thank you, thank you. So we're up on everything. Everything's good. Everything are, we getting, fine. are we getting questions on Facebook? Yeah, we're, we're just starting to. Oh, good. <clears throat> uh, excuse me if I burp. Jesus says, uh, "Hello, I love your art. So very beautiful." Oh, thank you. Do you illustrate children's books? I don't. I've I've wanted to in the past, but I just it's not something that I do right now. Uh. So, part of me wants to just kind of dive in and just start painting. I might do this as a different, in a different approach. Actually, let me, let me, I'm going to go really broad first. I'm going to push the, the expression just a touch. So, is, um, Zongi is asking if, um, Dustin's here today. No, no, Dustin. We just got, we've got Vedanta. Sorry. <laughs> No, Dustin's on vacation. Um, Dustin is on vacation today. Did Dustin take the photo of that gorilla? No. This is, I pulled this from Facebook. And uh, I just found it so haunting. I just thought it would be nice to maybe do an image of it and push it into my own style. And, uh and just have some fun with it. I really love the the um, the the blue highlights on here. Question: How to get better at character anatomy as a beginner artist? Well, you got to really study human anatomy or animal anatomy, whatever it is that you're interested in, and um, and you do it. You sit down and you draw and you make mistakes and you learn from your mistakes and you just keep going and going and that's how you do it that's how i've done it over a lifetime of drawing the only way i've learned is through doing and and i emphasize the idea of making mistakes because you don't learn without making those mistakes Oh, 
give him a little, maybe a little smile here. Twitch question. Hey, I'm a computer animation student. I just wanted to ask you how you stay motivated when doing your work. I'm currently struggling to stay fully motivated to complete my work to meet deadlines. Well, I love what I do. I have no problem staying motivated. I'm not sure what your situation is. Um, you know, being, uh, maybe it's not, maybe that's not the, it's not the thing for you. Maybe, maybe it's not something that you're fully vested in doing. Um, you know, if, if you ask me about how do I find time to do stuff, that's a different question. And maybe you're asking that. But when people ask me about how do you stay motivated, um, to me, that's a whole other issue because that's talking about, you know, and then sure, there's sometimes that I just don't feel like drawing. But that's not that's not the usual. That's not the norm. I've been doing this for professionally. I've been creating art for thirty five years, and I never get uh, I never have any lack of motivation for it because it's something I'm thinking about all the time. Like I live it, I breathe it. I, um, you know, it's just it's that's what I do. And so if you get to that, um, maybe you might want to. Just do well, first of all, just get in there and start doing it. That's that's one one of the most important things is just do it and your motivation will happen, hopefully. And then if you're still having issues, then um, then take a break from it and see and kind of search yourself and see if this is really what you want to do. Um, Kevin Van. Ben Claverin is asking, what's the biggest difference in a monkey skull and a human skull? Which this is a gorilla. Is there this is a gorilla, difference yeah. between in the monkeys? Well, there's a lot of different species chimps. of, yeah, there's a lot of different species of primates. So, you know, whether it's a gorilla, you know, apes or monkeys or, or whatever chimps. it might be. Chimpanzees, right? Baboons? There... Chimps, chimps are apes. Oh, okay. Um, basically, apes are tailless, like we're an ape, and then monkeys have tails. I'm going to push this a little bit so more. So what's the difference in the skull from humans? Yeah, I mean, there's obviously it's the brow ridge. There's a big difference there. The jaw, um, especially with gorillas who are vegetarian, they have a much heavier jaw um, for chewing. They have a big crest, just like grizzly bears do, you know, and lions, a big crest along their skull for all that extra muscle to attach um, for when they're... Uh, eating because they chew so much vegetation. I'm going to push this a little bit. I want to see if I can come up with something a little. Um, Daniel's asking, do they want to buy um, a budget tablet without a screen? What do uh -huh. you think is a good choice for that? Uh, Wacom bamboo tablets are, I think, are really great. And um, the bamboo, not the bamboo. Uh, it's a uh, um, yeah. Is it bamboo? The uh, I haven't I haven't used one in so long. Um, the uh, the the ones put out by Wacom. Nick will know. It's just a tablet without a screen. And yeah, you attach it to your computer and draw on it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what I first started with. Wacom Intuos. Thank you, Nick. Intuos. I was I was drawing a blank. My brain turned off. Yeah, they I, I really love Intuos. Um, I use them when I if I you know uh, if okay. I have if I don't have a, a Cintiq on hand to, to lecture with. Yeah, I've seen you do it at lectures. Yeah. Um, are you using Wacom Pro with paper option? Is that a thing? Uh, I don't know what that is with paper okay. option. Uh, no, I'm using a Wacom. Cintiq. And using Photoshop. And Photoshop, yep. There we go. There we go. We're all going to be at it about an hour and a half today. It's going to be kind of quick. Um, oh, that's right. I forgot, I forgot to mention this. Thanks, Nick. Sorry about that. <clears throat> 
Um, we've got our big live uh, event coming up on December 12th. That's a big one. I'm really excited about this because I'm going to be talking about, um, specifically, I'm going to talk about some of the dog animation that I've been doing and the design. So I'm going to do animal character designs focused on dogs. And then we're going to take that and I'm going to animate. I'm going to do an animation demonstration and I'm going to do it on paper. I'm going to go back to the, the retro, <laughs> retro old style that we used to do back in the so old. back in the back in the day. Wow. <laughs> back in like, like early 2000s. I know. So long ago. <laughs> <laughs> so many people, I know. It was that for so many people now that's when they were born. There's so many college students that were born in like 2000 and 1999 and all that. I'm just and that seems like yesterday to me. It's really kind of crazy. Someone said, is that Rafiki from Lion King? No. Rafiki no. was Rafiki a was mandrel. A, oh, he was a mandrel? Yeah. Not a gorilla. No. Not a gorilla. Not a gorilla. Let's flop it. Let's make sure we got this all looking right. I'm going to push that jaw. Give him a bigger jaw. He looks like a cool dude, though. Yeah, he does. Yeah. I, uh, I really, uh, the, the photo just kind of stopped me in my tracks. I was... Paging through, see the paging through my Facebook. The intelligence. Yeah. Um, in the eyes. Did you show the reference? Yeah. Oh. Okay. YouTube uh, follow up question. I have a lot of motivation, but I just can't think of ideas. Oh, see, that's a different. That's a different way then. So that's that's good. That's a good question. Um, I can't think of ideas. Oh, I lost it. Um, the thing for that is, you know, I I force myself just to sit, and and. Uh, and start to draw and sometimes I'll just I'll just start doodling and um, and as I draw and I'll listen to music uh, that's you know really visual I'll watch movies that'll cause me to think about different things I'll do a lot of different um, uh, exercises that will spark me to start thinking about different things but one of the best things that I can that I've done is just forcing myself to sit and start drawing just draw. Just move the paper, pencil on the on the screen or on the on paper or whatever it is that you might be doing. And you'll be surprised at how it just kind of starts to evolve and kind of manifest itself. But we're going to go dark with this. A little bigger, too. A little bigger. A little bigger. <clears throat> Use the rule of thirds. Get that center of attention right on that upper third quadrant. YouTube comment. Uh, comment. Hey, Vedanta, your jewelry is so cool. Awesome. Thank you. Twitch question. Hi, Aaron. Is storyboarding, storyboard with Lyndon Ruddy a good course for beginners in storyboarding? Yes, it is. It absolutely is. I highly recommend it. Uh, I'm going to push this eye. Someone's asking about the scholarship. Yeah. Uh, how, how does it go? How goes the scholarship? Go to, go to, uh, are you, they're asking like, I how's it that, going? Yeah, how's it going? Oh, it's going great. We've, it's going great. We've already awarded uh, several. And uh, have you uh, announced them at all? Or no, we're not announcing oh, okay. them. No. We're just, yeah, we're keeping that personal. But we have, uh, we have uh, awarded several so far, and um, and it's been really, really cool. I'm very, very happy with it. So yeah, you and, and if you're and um, if you if you've submitted already, don't worry, we've got your portfolio, and we'll 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 keep, keep looking. Keep it in the pile. Right? Keep it in the pile. Yeah. 
Keeping it in the pile. Twitch question. Hi, Aaron. Uh, how do you store your larger sketch pads, like 18 by 24? I lay them flat. I've got big shelves where I can just lay them flat. I don't actually have big sketch pads at 18 by 24, but I have like watercolor paper and things like that at that size. And I just lay everything flat. Um, Angelina says, I've always dreamed of being an animator and illustrator. Um, um, besides practice and regular drawing, how does one actually get there? I love your courses and appreciate you so much. Well, you just said it. Practice and regular drawing. That's the only way you do it. That's how you get there. You got to you gotta animate. You got to do it a lot. And you, and you learn by doing it a lot. And that's how that's how you do it. There, there is also like networking and stuff like that, right? About yeah, but like... that's, I mean, networking doesn't mean anything if you can't animate. So the bottom line is you have to be able to do the job. You got to be able to do it. And the only way you can do it is getting in there and doing it and making mistakes and getting frustrated and, and questioning yourself and everything that goes with it. Cause that's what happened to me. It's like, it's, it's animation's hard. It's just really hard. And, uh, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's, you know, it, 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 it's something that you have to work really, really hard at to, to, uh, to master. And it, you know, it took me years. So the best thing you can do for yourself is to get in there and force yourself to do it because the more you do it, the more you're going to learn and the faster you're going to learn and it'll get you that much further down the road, down the road. Because doing it for a living, you have to be able to produce the work. You have to exactly. be able to do the work, yeah. whether it, you're working for, you know, Pixar yeah. or And I have found that, especially now, you know, the more I draw on a regular basis, like I'm doing now, um, it re even even to this day, and it's been thirty some odd years that I've been animating, it still continues to affect my animation and improve it. I animate uh, with less um, less uh, struggle because I've it's always been a struggle, <clears throat> but I um. Nowadays, uh, I animate with a lot less struggle than I used to. Kimberly Connors asking, where can I learn more about animal anatomy? <laughs> well, there's any number of books. You know, animal anatomy in general is a huge, that's a huge term. You know, animal anatomy is, you know, it's everything from fish to birds to people to whatever. So um, think about what you might like and start there. And then, you know, branch out. One of the biggest things that I recommend is understanding, and I've got the book right here, understanding um, comparative anatomy. Blank screen. Blank screen. Blank screen. I find this book really, uh, really interesting. Uh, can we go to? Yep. Sure, there you go. So this is Anatomy Drawing School. This is a book uh, I ordered recently, uh, or Nick ordered for me. And it's by Andra, I can't say the names. It's uh, A-N-D-R-A-S-S-Z-U-N-Y-O-G-H-Y. Say that one. <laughs> um, and then uh, G Y O R G Y, Georgi uh, Fair. What? F F E H E R. Oh, that, is that the name of the authors? Yeah. Oh, so it's Anatomy Drawing School. Yes, and those are the authors. Okay. And uh, it's a very, very good book because it does a lot of comparative anatomy. And one of the biggest things you learn with comparative anatomy is the, it's basically we all have the same parts, they're just shaped in different ways. And that's a huge thing. Uh, you'll hear me talk about this a lot. Um, because once you understand that, then when you're drawing a dog and you get to the shoulder, you'll understand, oh, okay, that shoulder's got to work in this way and you can figure out the anatomy from that. Awesome. And you have a ton of courses on your website. I'm just going to say. And I've got a ton of courses on the website as well. About yes. multiple different kinds of animals. Yeah. yeah, but those are very specific. But if you're wanting to, you know, if you're thinking about animal anatomy, 
this book I found is really great. Um, how do you study animal muscles? Is that also just with, same thing with anatomy? Yeah, and I and I don't worry about specific muscles. I don't get it. For me, it's not like a scientific anatomy class. So when I when I do my my when I study the muscles of an animal, it's more about understanding muscle groups. And uh, and once again, it's it's understanding them in relation to my own muscle groups. And so when I when you can understand how the, the muscles and physiology of your of your body works, then you can apply that to other animals. And it becomes a lot easier. Nicole says, I love your lessons, drawings and you um, and especially learning with you. Thank you. Thank you. Lots of love out here. You're amazing. Uh, what about Thanksgiving? How was your dinner? And did you see Manny was eating tacos alone? I did. Poor Manny. Is that Manny that's on there now? No, this is a Ma Matthew. Is, is mentioned Manny. Oh. Poor Manny. Eating tacos alone. Poor, poor Manny. Oh. Poor Manny. <laughs> they look like good tacos. They did. They're turkey but tacos. We had a feast, and yeah, it was great. Had a, we had a... Really big feast. Turkey and all the trimmings. Yeah. How how much do you draw every day? How long do you draw? Sometimes I don't draw at all. But other times I'll draw for six or eight hours and I draw a lot. Usually six or eight hours a day. You know, during the week. Come on, let's see here. Okay, so Angelina's clarifying your question. How do you how do you get your work seen? How do you get it out there? Because if you're practicing all the time and you're and you're creating stuff, then how do you? Well, we live in a we live in a time at, to for you know if you want to be a musician or or uh, an artist, we live in one of the in the best time we've ever been you know, lived in history as far as wanting to do those. Look at all the social media. Look at you know, you know YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and all of these, and that's you know that's how people get their work seen nowadays, and and get albums made and get, you know, Justin Bieber was a product of working YouTube, right? And, um, and so as artists, it's, it's, you know, this is the best time we've ever had to, to be part of that. And so it's a matter of just getting it done and then getting it out there and finding a platform and then promoting it. And it takes time. It'll, it'll take time for sure. Um, I've seen people get hired at like CTN and stuff. Oh, yeah. I've seen them because they're, they're big networking events. Yeah, exactly. You got the, uh, I think that's. Um, oh, sorry. It's, uh, it's FedEx. FedEx, yeah. Sorry. We got the FedEx. Um, but yeah, and, and people that have followed you, I, I've met them at CTN or Lightbox and seen them actually get hired, you know, by like Blue Sky or Netflix. Yeah. Ed Zachary. Ed Zachary. Oh, that's I can't. Um, how do you ancient the heavy metal angel forest asks, what is a good way to overcome low self esteem as an artist? Um, just do it more, and don't compare yourself to other artists. The ones that I find that have low self esteem, I find that are they're they're comparing themselves to other artists. Stop it. Just stop it. It's the best thing I can tell you. Compare yourself to yourself. Make your, you know, if, if, compare yourself to, you know, where you were a week ago, where you were a year ago, and try to try to see what you've accomplished since then or learned since then. But when you start comparing yourself to other artists and using that as a gauge, you'll get defeated every time. We all learn uh, at different rates. We're all at different levels. And if you if you start thinking that you should be at this level or that level because of what somebody else is doing, you're going to defeat yourself right away. And so, you know, use yourself to, to as your measuring stick. That's the best thing to do. Peglay is um, asking if you have any um, art related injuries or if you deal with like, um, I don't know if it's called bone spurs or what, um, but he said he's dealing with healing from, you know, like shoulder injuries or stuff like that. No, I don't have any, not art related. I know a lot of people that have gotten carpal tunnel and all kinds of issues, but I don't have any issues like that. 
Um, I tend to draw more from the shoulder and I don't do a lot of like really noodly drawing. You've only injured yourself for like sports activities. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Snowboarding. Snowboarding and <laughs> wakeboarding and Oh, this Travis morning, is on. Said, that morning. Good morning, my beautiful family. Good morning, Travis. Travis. Good morning, Newman. Question, hey Aaron, do you remember Norma and Jonathan Klinger? They're my animation instructors at PCAD. Norma and Jonathan Klinger. I don't remember them. Norma and Jonathan Klinger. Hmm. That sounds familiar. I'm not sure. I don't remember. YouTube question, if this is not a photo you took, how do you deal with copyright? I'm not selling it. I'm just doing it as an exercise. <clears throat> That's why. That's how. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel says that you animated Nala and another artist animated Simba, but when the characters interact side by side, how does that work? We take turns. The, the dominant character will go first, will animate first, and then, uh, and then we hand it off to the other animator. Oh, so you don't animate both characters? No, we don't but animate. It, but in some Back scenes... In, in, well, in, in, in CG, a lot uh -huh. of times both characters are animated by the same animator. Oh, okay. But, within two, but with 2D, 2D, we did it differently. And also, if you have secondary characters, like yeah. in your scene, you, you animated like the animals in that music scene, didn't you? Some of the animals? Uh, in the music scene. The Lion scene, King? Well, Can't Wait to be King? Yeah, Can't Wait to be King. Oh, I did like the ostriches when they're riding the ostriches. Oh, okay, okay. I did that. Um, but yeah, it's, um, usually it's, it's especially like in the sequence where bell and beast where beast is getting bandaged, uh, and, and they they get into the argument. There's a lot of back and forth in that sequence. And, uh, and Mark Hen, who was the animator of bell and I animated beast, we just handed it back and forth and just kept doing that until the sequence was done. Okay. I've got a good question. O'Neill. um, Hi, Aaron. I'm working as a professional film editor and do illustrations and sometimes hand-drawn animation as a hobby. What kind of skills um, do an editor should an editor bring to an animation feature or short? It's the same skills that an editor brings to a live-action feature or short. It's all about timing, you know, understanding timing, understanding cutting, understanding pacing, um, all of that. It's exactly the same. The, the, the only difference between editing... Um, in animation and editing and live action is that all the creative part of the editing editing uh, is done up front in the storyboard phase. And that's part of the luxury of it because we do actually create the entire movie um, before we actually make the movie. And, uh, and so that's really cool because then it gives the editor the option to sit down and start pulling it together. And if you find that you're missing a shot or you or something can be done in a different way, you have the ability to go back to the story artist and say, "Hey, we've got to, um, we've got another idea here that might here that might work better." Uh, whereas in live action, once you've got everything shot, unless you have a huge budget to go back and do reshoots, um, you're stuck with what you got. And so that's one of the one of the beauties of working uh, in animation that I that I think. Um, Twitch question. I find it really daunting to learn animal anatomy. Do I have to learn all of the animal anatomy to get a job in animation or does it depend on the project? It depends on the project. It really does. Yeah. So don't get, don't get too overwhelmed. You know, not, there's, there's no animator out there that knows all of the animal uh, animals all the time. So don't worry about that. Gabby says, oh, my God, hey. 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 <laughs> um, do you know the RGB and CMYK color palettes? No. I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, it's, it's well, it's um, it's just how the, uh, it's ones for print, ones for uh, um, monitors. Oh, they're asking what your preference is. Oh, I, to me, it's it's the same. I just, I don't care what palette I'm working in because I, uh, I just, use the color that looks right for the image. So it doesn't matter. And I try to do stuff so it's going to be good in print. So I think whatever, whatever the palette is that you're supposed to use for that. I'm terrible with that. Nick's the one that knows all that stuff. Switch comment. Hi, Aaron. I just want to tell you that I had an incredible surprise. I was given a huge gift by my brother. I opened it up and it was the charcoal tiger drawing from you. Oh, I am wow. so glad that it made it. 
We oh, that's such awesome. A, a headache trying to smell that thing. I, I, well, it was, yeah, but I'm glad I got there. I just wanted to say <laughs> that it's even better in person, and it's on my wall inspiring me every day. I just wanted to say a massive thank you and keep up the amazing work. Thanks, Cameron. Well, Cameron, Aww. I am so glad that that piece made it to your wall. It's it, actually one of my favorite charcoal pieces. It made it all done. the way across the ocean, baby. It did, I know. That makes me so happy. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for letting me know because um, I always worry, especially sending it overseas, sending my stuff overseas, if it's going to make it intact in, in one and, piece. Yeah, not get damaged. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that is one of my favorite pieces that I've done, so I'm glad you like it. Sorry. I, I love that piece, yeah. Um, when, okay, let's see. I'm starting to retake human figure drawing in timed poses. Um, and then it says, any advice in drawing animals? Yeah, you know, drawing animals, it's just the same as drawing humans. You've just got to practice at it and do it more and more often and, and study the anatomy. You know, one thing, people get frustrated with drawing animals from life, but it's only because they're not familiar with it. You draw people from life all the time, but it's because you know how people are built, or most people do. And so what you need to do is just do the same amount of study with animals. Just get in there and, and force yourself to learn proportion and then and you know all of that stuff and if you do that then it starts becoming second nature and when you when you're drawing an animal from life you're just jotting down a quick pose a gesture and then you fill in the rest with the knowledge that you have of the of the uh of the anatomy um manuel ramirez Vidal asks, how do I make sure That's my... That's an awesome name. I know. Manuel Ramirez Vidal. <laughs> um, how do I make sure my perfectionism doesn't get in the way? Stop it. Just stop it. <laughs> well, we all make mistakes. That's how you learn, right? Yeah, but I mean, there, there's also... What I think he's saying is how do I... You know, he keeps perfecting it and perfecting it. And, and you, you, know, you do hit a... A point of diminishing returns. There's something called overworked. Yeah, you, you overwork it and, and you know, there, sometimes good enough is exactly good enough. And I don't mean that as you're, you're compromising. It's where it should be because if you take it any further, you're going to destroy it. You're going to kill it. You're going to, you know, it's going to lose its spontaneity or whatever it is that it might have that's keeping it magical. Yeah, I'll find I'll go back over a line. Yeah. And it doesn't look as good. Yep. And you can't find it again. Yeah. Truth, baby. That's truth. Because <laughs> we were doing those quick sketches the other night, remember, of each yep. other? Yeah. You know? And it's like if I went back and tried to re rework it, it just it yeah. lost it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we were sitting outside the other night, drinks in hand, drawing, doing quick drawings of our dogs and of each other. It was fun. It was fun. The next day, we're like, wow, these aren't that great. <laughs> they looked really good that night. It's called Don't Drink and Draw. <laughs> draw, draw goggles. Okay. Um, how do you come up with concepts for characters and other work? Ask Britt. Well, one of the biggest things uh, with coming up with characters is making sure that they're written first. You know, I don't just start with, hey, I'm going to do this blah 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 character out of the blue that character's got to exist first it's got to exist in print it's got to exist in my mind and and then once you do that then all of a sudden it'll start gaining a life of its own you know and so once that exists in your head then it becomes a lot easier to start visualizing it and getting it down i'm not sure i understand this question but um from matthew how do you characterize animals slash people and keep them feeling professional uh well i'm assuming by the word professional making a, just like a professional looking design i guess oh but like a pushed character <coughs> yeah well, it's, it, it just comes from experience. And one of the things I like to do is push my characters till they are pushed too far. Because a lot of times you don't know until you've gone too far, right? So sometimes it, it, it pays to go too far with a design and then you can pull yourself back. 
We'll keep this. I'm going to keep this loose. Um, are there any 2D animation jobs left in the industry? Or are they all 3D now? No, there's 2D jobs left. I know, you know, the the, the Wolf Walkers is all done in 2D. Well, which studio? The Cartoon are... Saloon. Because um, there's Sergio Pablo's studio that Sergio does 2D. Sergio Pablo's does 2D. I don't know what the job That's in availability Spain, is. I think, right? Yeah, most of the 2D jobs are, are in, in Europe. are in Europe. But Ireland, yeah. yeah. Cartoon Ireland. Saloon is that? Yeah, Cartoon Saloon. Does sound influence the way you animate? Absolutely, especially if I'm doing a, a sequence or a scene with sound. Obviously, right? It'll it'll influence the way that I I create the imagery. Um, but if I'm just sitting listening to music, that influences the way I animate. Um, a lot of times, if I'm animating dialogue, when I'm first planning out the dialogue, I can't listen to music. It distracts me. Uh, too much from what it is that I'm trying to animate. <coughs> Excuse me. So I can't listen. I have to turn all, all sound off until I get through um, figuring out the dialogue and the mouth shapes and all that. And then once I, once I get through that, then I can go back and crank the music and everything's great. What size Cintiq is that? And which is your preferred size to work on? The bigger, the better for me. I love working on big big drawing boards. Is this 30 something? This is 32 inch. This is the biggest Cintiq they have. And I just I love it because it's because it is so big. And it, it just it, it provides everything that I I like anything to make it feel like I'm drawing on a real board or canvas. Um Proco's having a sale too um that Art of Air, that Nick's, I think, pushing that he's oh, yeah, mentioning yeah, yeah. it, which yes. is cool. Yeah, because um, um, Proko's your good buddy too. Um, yeah. Oh, I wouldn't say he's that great of a buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I love Proko. <laughs> we all love Proko. No, Proko's <laughs> awesome. So cool. And um, um, yeah, Proko's got a sale going on. So uh, go on over. My good buddy Proko is having a Black Friday sale. Use promo code Black Twenty. For 20% uh, 20 off any order, including my charcoal course, because I did a charcoal course for him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, including my charcoal course I did for him. Go to Proco.com for more information. Um, so, have, yeah, we love to promote each other, too. Uh, yeah, he, he does. He's really great at human anatomy, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, and I'm sure Bobby Chu might be having a sale as well. I'm sure he's got something Bobby going Chua, on. School, is it schoolism? Schoolism, yeah. yeah. Um, do you have hobbies outside of drawing? Uh, sure. I mean, I used to be a lot more, when I had a younger body, I had a, you know, a lot more sports that I did, wakeboarding, and, and which is really no excuse. I've just kind of let myself go. But you play music. <laughs> I do play music. Guitar and sing. Guitar. Yeah. Building. You're pretty good at that. Yeah, we do a lot of building. Making stuff. Yeah. Making stuff. Exactly. I like to make stuff. Daniel asks, can you recommend a New Year's movie? A New Year's movie. Is there something we saw that was good recently? That's what I'm trying to think of. There's nothing that stands out in my brain that really, like, oh my gosh, we got to, whoops. Oh, well, I had never seen um, Live, Die, Repeat before. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. And you made, well, you didn't make me watch it, but I watched it willingly. And it was great. Yeah, that's a good one. It's funny which a lot of how many movies I haven't seen. That's my favorite genre is sci-fi. I just love good sci-fi. Smartly written sci-fi. Well, what's isn't there one we were gonna watch? Um, Let him go. Uh, yeah. It's interesting. That's a that's and a Kevin big Costner. drama. I like yeah. Kevin Costner though. That's a, that one we haven't seen yet though, but it's got great reviews. Diane Lane and Kevin Costner. Yeah. It's it's just pretty... came out though. So here I'm just kind of hitting some of these cool um, highlights. And I want to get the shadow areas to uh, to read as well. Someone's asking if you can show that book one more time. They're trying to find it online. Anatomy Drawing School, Human and Animal. Oh, it's a little fuzzy oh, for some reason. Back out because it's out of focus. Oh. Here, go to my uh, go okay. to my webcam, my close up. It should say. Oh, webcam. Up. There you go. Oh, oh that's no, you. that's me. Oh, that's right. We switched it. <laughs> well, here. Uh, no, actually, yours is. 
Yours is uh. Hold see, on. Yeah, go to is it? Oh, it got switched. That's right. It's okay. Um, Sorry, it's called ana anatomy. Anatomy, and it's here. You can read here, off I'll the do. the name. Sorry, I'm really all these. Some of these buttons aren't right. It's okay. Anatomy, it's all right. We switched things around. School, I forgot to tell you. Human and animal. And Andras Sizunyagi. <laughs> I tell you, that's a hard one. Georgi <laughs> Fehim. Okay. It's a toughie. Okay, it's back to you. But it's called Anatomy Drawing School, Human and Animal. All right. Looks like a good book. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. yeah, sure. Um, Gabby said, how am I? Uh, because she hasn't seen me in a while. You know, I only do these once in a while. And uh, I'm doing good. The Gabster. Good, good things. The Gabster. Soldering a lot of metals. Into the heating up metals lately. It's fun. Oh, the hot chip challenge was my last appearance. That's right, Martin. Wow. That was a while ago. Yeah. Good memory. <clears throat> I yeah. think someone's stalking Martin you. Martin Berger forgets nothing. <laughs> okay? He even he's he always talks about when you that time you met Walt Disney. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and like not remembering to save your grunge layer. And Martin's like the encyclopedia of your live streams, I'm pretty sure. But here I'm just coming in and just having fun with this dry brush. Just hitting it, running, running around in here. Have you ever done a la prima oil painting? Yes. That would be a great live stream, um, says Murray Staff. Absolutely. It's a lot of a la prima in my, on my oil painting course. Oh, okay. Travis says there's also a lot of 2D studios in Canada. In Canada? Mm-hmm. Take off. <laughs> Yeah. Have you seen this series Primal? Uh, no. I yeah, I'm not sure if it's a uh, live action or if it's animated. Okay. So now I'm going to add some deeper shadows in here. Actually, I'm going to use my this brush. Martin's funny. He's like, Nick says, the great, talented, awesome Proko. Aaron says, Proko? Never heard of her. <laughs> Eleven. <laughs> uh, have you seen the second season of Mandalorian yet? Yeah. yeah. Oh, come on. I, I know, know. I'm just I know sticking to one. You think like, that show I, never actually, goes anywhere. This, I, I do have to say, this season is better than last season so far. Because of the production value? No, the, no but I, I just think it's a little bit more engaging, too. But so far, I mean, the first one I really enjoyed. You know, the, actually, the production value on the first one blew me away with the big creature, whatever it was. But um, uh, on the first episode, the first episode, yeah, of this season, of this season. Um, but um, I just you criticize that the story doesn't go anywhere. They always end up where it began. It, yeah, it just it's too, the 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 plot development is too slow for me. It's not a lot of progression. But that's what it, a, a, I feel like an us. It's episodic. It's more like a Star Trek episode where you deal with an issue in the episode, but you don't really get any further than you were. Well, it's, it, uh, yeah, but this one, it's... It's, like, really slow? It's, yeah, because <laughs> it doesn't... The overall A story really does not... Like, where is he taking Yoda? I don't know where it's going. Where, it does, where? He's doing the same will thing he, that he was doing well, they also last went, season. They went back to the same planet, like, three times. <laughs> exactly. I feel like we'd have to go back there. Now, I gotta go. I gotta go make repairs on my ship. Now they're frozen. How many times does he have to make repairs on his ship? <laughs> we have to save the. Village. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, because I, I know there's going to be a lot of people going. Hey, it's a great show. I know. I, it, is it is a great, a great show. show. It's fun, but I just wish the. Uh, I, I mean, wish the plot would advance a little better. Every time Baby Yo Yo goes, <laughs> I mean, you just melt. You just can't help it. Like every scene, yeah. he's doing. I mean, remember he's eating all those eggs. He's so mischievous. Yeah, yeah, he was wiping out an entire species. He was. <laughs> oh, so mischievous. Oh, the 
know there's some more questions in here. Oh, Over the Moon, your thoughts. I loved Over the Moon. I really loved it a lot. Glenn Keane. Glenn Keane. Yep. I um uh I think it was really really entertaining. My grandkids loved it. It was very engaging. Stephen Marshall says, "Have I learned oh, I have learned from you not to keep too tight when rendering. Why does it um seem to work when I stay loose? Um is there a time when I should bring it in tighter? Sure. I mean, it, it all it, obviously it depends on the the style of whatever it is that you're creating. You know, sometimes it needs to be looser. Sometimes it's going to be tighter. It's, it's it really does just depend on. Uh, for me, it's a stylistic choice. I feel like the first drawing you stay really loose, and then the second drawing over it you you tighten up. Yeah, but then but it, it, but a lot of times I tighten up, and then when I render, I'll I'll get loose again over the mm -hmm. top of that. When you start adding, laying in color and stuff. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yannick says this griddle looks gorgeous. Gorgeous. And Erica Bay has been here. Erica. Be beautiful gorilla, she says. Thank you. We oh, love Erica. Erica. And Frankie. Erica. The Bays. Oh, the Bays. The Bays. They're awesome. Kick your butt in judo. They will. <laughs> They're like so sweet, but deadly. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm just going in and putting in some random little details here and there. Here, 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 here. I might go in. Where's my... Let me grab some money. Let me try something here. Well, actually, I'm going to continue. So when will you finish Snow Bear? And how much will it cost to watch the movie? Thank you very much. <laughs> It'll be free to watch it because we're just going to get it out there. And uh, I don't know when I'm going to get it done. <laughs> Oh, I've got too many irons in the fire. It's but it will get done. It's for the people. Yes. For the people. I've got to get... Uh, see, this one's starting to get away from me. i got to, I got to start to unify it a little bit. Eres incredible. Incredible. Um, tus ilustraciones son genitales. I'm what? not sure what that says. I just read it as written. Okay. <laughs> I think it means you that you're incredible and your illustrations are just oh. wonderful. Well, thank you. Primal is a Cartoon Network animated series created by the same director that created Samurai Jack. Oh, okay. Um, what makes this fun is it's without dialogue. It involves the ne Neanderthal befriends a dinosaur. Oh, that's cool. This is this is Travis, and he says you should watch it. Was that is that Leo Chu? Did Leo Chu do that, Travis? I'm not sure. Let's see what he says. Um, same person that did Samurai Jack. So I'm yeah, not which sure. I thought was I thought that was Leo. Leo was our creative executive on Brother Bear. Oh, genius means genius. Oh, the per that person that I, I don't know if it was, I think it was Spanish, said you're a genius. Like you're a genius. You're a genius. You're a genius. I mean, you're okay. <laughs> you like, you can draw and stuff. Uh, Erica Bay says, are you going to get the art of book for Over the Moon? Oh, I didn't know it was out. I may, I think it looks like it might be. If he's got Glenn drawings in it, I will. Yeah. Um, some of the people are saying, the people, Zanji, Zanji and Gabby and Martin, that they love the community, and, and um, Erica, the community here. You know, they feel like it's their own little family. Oh, when you do the live streams. I like that. I like it a lot. Okay, Martin. Oh, yes, Martin. I will read this. Can you please read this, Vedanta? It says, "Thank you, Aaron, for the weekly live streams and your courses. You helped me to improve my artwork. I have painted more paintings this year than ever before." Oh, that's awesome. In Austria, 
Oh, I lost it. Sure, darn it. In Austria, the COVID-19 situation is turning pretty bad in the last weeks. In these dark times, Aaron's live streams are like a light in the dark. Aaron is a huge motivation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for telling me that. Oh, that that motiv Martin. motivates me. Thank you very much. Martin Burger. Uh, I love it. You got to put beauty back in the world. Hey, that's, that's our goal. That's what we should be doing as human beings. Make someone else's life better. If we all had that attitude, we'd all be living it up. Tartakovsky is the creator of Primal. Oh, okay. Tartakovsky? I'm not sure if that's how you say that. <clears throat> gotcha. Mm. By the way, have you saved? No, not yet. Thanks, Martin. Will. Thank you, Martin. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. Martin. Martin Burger. Everybody. Uh, we can create this like little short live action movie of like meeting all these people right. in like black black and white film noir. <laughs> and we go and meet like Martin. Martin, Martin how you doing? Soji, Soji. <laughs> YouTube question: Did you watch Di Disney's Dinosaur Two Thousand? What did you think of it? Um, I liked it okay. I just felt like it really. Um, it was the story was a little thin. I I thought the look was really cool for the time. Of what? Dinosaur, the movie Dinosaur. I don't think I've ever seen it. We all um, you know, we were at the studio when it came out. We all went and saw it, and we all thought, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It just I always felt like the story was just a little bit thin, but I I really liked it. Mm, how often do you read? Um, you read a book on the plane. Yeah, I mean, I read a fair amount. I, I, I'm, it's been a while since I've read books. I mean, um, Does reading I, I got, I got a good a good Stephen King uh, book that I'm going through right now. But um, but yeah, it's it's uh, I don't read nearly as much as I used to. I always had a book going. Um. But I just, I, I don't read as much anymore for whatever reason. Yeah, I remember you forgot your phone, and so you're like, okay, I'm getting a book. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, think, I, think my, I think that's what's happened to a lot of us is my, my phone is taken over. We read so much, like whether it's news or whatever on, the, on our phone. Yeah, and social media yeah. and all that, and it's kind of taken over my life a little bit, which is a little shameful to say. We read, they're just called comments. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Hi, peeps. This is Sam Silva. Um, what a treat to watch you live. As far as being able to make money off your art, would you recommend the artists do um, what they know will sell or do what they enjoy or a combination of both? Well, it's, a, it's obviously if you can do a combination of both, that's the best. And uh, But, I mean, if you, you just said it. If you want to make a living at it, then you're going to have to, you got to create what the market is going to buy. If the, you know, if, if, if you enjoy, you know, creating images that other people find uninteresting or just don't sell, then you're going to have to find something else. If you want to make a living at it, you can do that other stuff in your own time. <clears throat> and then, and then once again, the, the real joy is being able to find that thing that, everybody loves and you enjoy creating you know that's where i got lucky with animation and, and wildlife art because i love creating animal paintings and in general a lot of people like to buy them alternatively when you have lots of good ideas or lots of irons in the fire how do you prioritize which projects to work on the ones that are close to your heart or the yeah. ones that pay your bills yes the ones that pay, what pay the bills i guess but I mean, we—it's it, it, really a, a, an individual decision, right? Because you know, we—I try to get certain things done uh, to a point where I can, where it allow me time to go and do something else that may not be as lucrative. You know, so uh, it's approaching it from you know that point of view you gotta you gotta really kind of weigh your options how often do you change your stylus nibs you know what 
since I've gotten this Cintiq, I've had this Cintiq for, how long have I had this Cintiq? A year and a half? Hey, Lily. I haven't changed my stylus tip. I've got one of the hard plastic ones in here. Haven't changed it. Does Lily want to come in here? <laughs> she's shaking her head. <laughs> she's doing Come on, Lily. Get introduced to the world. She's doing the slicey the neck sign. Nope, nope. <laughs> come on, Lily. Meet the world. The world wants to meet you. It's my youngest daughter. And she um, does not want to come in. I'm going to embarrass her. I think she wants leftover the, turkey sandwich. I'm going to embarrass her in front of the world. Um, do you prefer doing these types of illustrations or animating? Um, it depends on my mood. Because I, um, I love both. I really do. And someone's asking about the Stephen King book. I think it's called The Institute? Yeah. Right? Okay. I don't know how I remembered that. I don't know how you did either. <laughs> I always know where your glasses are for some reason, I know. too. <laughs> I want to learn about directing. Any suggestions, says Khaled, books or courses? You know, um, the biggest thing about directing is, is for me, especially from an animation standpoint, is understanding that story is number one and understanding that you don't have to have all the answers, especially if you have a whole crew of people. They're there for a reason. They've been brought in because they're the best at what they do or and 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 so let them let them do that let them be as good as they can be let them do what they were hired to do that was the big big eye opener for me well you you have to know what all the parts are to make a film but you don't have to do all the parts right, right? yeah and you know it, it's directing is it, it's steering the ship um you know, you want to know, you got to know the general direction that you want to go in, but you don't have to necessarily know the path all the time. And it's other people that can help you find the path. And that is when the film and the story and the ideas become stronger than what they would have ever been had one person handled the whole thing. Um, Gabby's saying if you only do art for what people want for the market, don't wouldn't you get burned out instead of doing it because you love to do it? Well, sure, and that's that's definitely a risk that you run. So that's why you want to make sure that you're you're, you know, you got to find that thing that it's gonna uh, that you can sustain yourself. I mean, we're not always, you know, when I was in college, I found that. There's two things that I made the best money at to support my way through college. I did patent drawings uh, for people, and that drove me insane. And I did caricatures. I made pretty good money go doing like bar mitzvahs and debutante parties of all things uh, in Sarasota. Um, you know, I made good money doing caricatures for those parties. I hated doing that though. But it got me through, and there is there is definitely a light at the end of the tunnel, as I knew I would, you know, it was a means to an end, and uh, and so yes, you run the risk of getting burnt out if you get stuck in a rut of doing it over and over and over and over and forever. But you know, you you plan for that. You plan to get out of it. You plan, you know, your escape. So Cora Dawson's asking about me and how I fit into the blazes, what my role is, what my official title is. Oh, your official title. <laughs> awesome girlfriend at this point. <laughs> awesome girlfriend. <laughs> um, lady, person. Hey, lady. Yeah, um, someone that has hobbies, lots of hobbies. <laughs> that one lady. Yeah, that one lady. Um, that was awfully forward. It's okay. No, because other people were answering that's his girlfriend because she was like, who, how who is, the hell are you? How who is the hell are you, lady? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Matthew on YouTube asks, uh, hi, Aaron. I'm currently learning to paint with acrylics, and I saw that your oil painting course is on sale. Would this course help me learn to paint in acrylic, or is it just for oil painting? It is just for oil painting. Acrylic is its own thing. I'm actually going to be doing an acrylic painting course in the future. 
Um, not anytime soon, unfortunately, but I will be doing one coming up. I love painting in acrylic and I definitely have advice. Um, I just don't have it right now. <laughs> and no, my, uh, as much as I would love to sell you the, <laughs> the oil painting course, um, it's really just for oil painting. It will not help you with acrylic. Is there such thing as acrylic digital painting? Well, there's digital painting that will mimic acrylics or mimic oils and, and things like that, if that's what you mean. Brushes that can mimic oil brushes. Do you like Sinbad, Legend of the Seven Seas? Uh, yeah, I think it's you know, DreamWorks, the DreamWorks one. Yeah, I thought it was all right. Do you have a next course lined up yet? Uh, I I've heard. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've got a couple of ideas. I've been thinking about doing a course doing another animation course, but doing it on paper. I thought that would be kind of fun. I've got another course, uh, animation course that I want to do. Um, I see so many young people that get caught up in uh, the mechanics of things and they forget the, the personality and the spirit of, of the animation that they're doing. And so I've got a course where I want to do just different walk cycles and movements where the, the, the mechanics are somewhat complex but showing how you can keep the personality in those in those pieces of animation. And so that's a big one that I want to do. And um, well, we've also got, we've got, uh, I want to do an acrylic painting course. I want to do another watercolor. I, I want to do a uh, landscape painting course in watercolor. Would you do primates or I think? Yes, doing, we're, you, gonna, we're talking you, about doing primates as well. You did bears at one point though, right? Yeah, I got bears. We got um, the bears. You got the bears. The bears. Yeah. Did you do African animals here? No. Uh, we got that one. We, we also have North American that we want to do. Let me see if I can create a brush. I want to see. And then you're going to do dinosaur. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> let's, huh. let's create a little hairbrush here. It's funny how many people have asked for like a dinosaur or fantasy. Well, didn't you do fantasy creatures? I did one on fantasy creatures. The mimicking woodland forest yep. creatures. Okay. Yep. So many courses, so little time. I know. So right? many courses. Um, they want to name the gorilla Chester Armstrong. Joe Rilla. I don't know. Bob. Bob. We will call him Bob. Eight oh eight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <clears throat> All right, there's a brush. Let me turn that off. Edit. Uh, let's see. Define brush preset. We're going to hit OK. There, now we got a brush. But now, I just designed a brush. I did. Now um, I've created a hairbrush. Now we're going to go to uh, Shape Dynamics, and I'm going to set it up for direction. Let me go to Brush Shape. We're going to turn this so it goes like this. Shape Dynamics, we're going to flip the X and the Y. Maybe not the Y. You flip the X. I know, right? And we'll do this. And let's do a little bit of scattering. Let's pull the shape back just a touch. There we go. And we might have a brush now. Let me come back to uh, oh, let me hit this and hit OK. OK. Oops. There we go. There we All go. right, there we go. There we Man, go. That was tough. So let's get a nice. Hmm. I'm liking the look of this guy. Blonde gray. It's f funny. It looks way better on that monitor than it does on my laptop. Oh, really? It must be my color settings. Just the color is way different. But it's, it's such an amazing drawing. Love it. Well, thanks. Thanks, baby. Thanks. Uh, do you know what transparent watercolor is and what it's used for? Yeah, transparent watercolor is watercolor. It's, just, it's watercolor used traditionally, which is transparent, meaning you you let the, the color of the paper, the white of the paper, 
shine through to create the light in the in the in the in the, in the piece. The degree of like saturation with the color. Yes. It, so it's not different than what regular watercolor. It's watercolor. Transparent it's just, watercolor is watercolor. It's watercolor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and gouache would be similar but opaque. Right? Yes, exactly. Okay. But you can treat gouache like watercolor because it is watercolor. Right, but it can also has like a white, doesn't it? it? Exactly. Which watercolor it creates, doesn't have a white. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. You gotta leave the paper white. Scattering. Let's do this. See, I know things. You do know things. <laughs> Aaron's dragon head drawing from a plastic covered saw. What was that? Was oh, yeah. pretty fantastic. What? Oh, thanks. What that, was that? Well, we we did a thing where I wanted to show that you could find inspiration from anything, and so our the when we were building the uh, the shed back there, the saw got covered up with a you know with a plastic bag, mm -hmm. and the way it looked like a dragon head. So I took a photo of it. You drew and, over it and created oh, a dragon. Said, yeah. Oh. Just wanted to show that you can find, you can find inspiration anywhere. Well, don't you see faces and everything, like in the wood and in the I trees see dead and that? I see. I mean, I literally see faces all the time. How many so. skulls do you own? <laughs> a lot. Mm, I don't know. One. I've got at a least lot. One. Well, I've got a lot in storage as well. At least seven. Yeah. Uh, Twitch question: Do you have at least a favorite character that you have drawn? Not really. I I really love all the characters that I've I've been able to do. I really enjoyed animating the Beast. He was one of my favorites. Do you did you want to work on Tarzan? Uh, I, I would have liked to have, but I was working on, I can't remember what I was, I think I was working on Brother Bear at the time. With Tarzan came out? Yeah. Hmm. And you had already... Oh, I was just finishing up uh, Mulan. Uh, what about Pocahontas? Because they moved you the, to that for a short time, right? Yeah, that was after Lion King. So that was, oh, okay. that was way before all that. Because <clears throat> Glenn was doing Pocahontas. And then he went on and did Tarzan. Uh, Martin would like to see you do a gouache course. Oh, a gouache course is a great idea. Okay. Because it's, yeah, it's, you can use it kind of like acrylic, but like watercolor. You can use it like both. Yeah. A great idea. Versatile. Yeah. I prefer acrylic. That's just my paint of choice. But I guess that's yes. just what I'm used to. Right. And how it works. And Yeah, I love how forgiving ac acrylic is. And how you can work over it and work over it and build it up and it's very very well, cool. Well, you can in that you way. can make it look like watercolor and you can make it look like oil. It, yep. like it's really versatile. Exactly. Mm, thanks, Shelly Guerra. Shelly Guerra says. V knows things and can sing. <laughs> so nice that V's moderating today. Oh, thanks. 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 How do they know I can sing? Have I have I, I broken out in song occasionally? Uh, I think you have. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> that was always by accident. I don't mean to. It just happens. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So I'm just going to push I'm going to push this back a little bit. Put some darks in here. Whoops. That's a too much. That's a too much. Um, they're, yeah, they would definitely buy a gouache course. Um, looks great, Aaron. Love it. Do you ever participate in urban sketcher events? Sketchers events? Uh, not really. <clears throat> I hit all of this with a little darker color. And I'm going to go in and pull some of these highlights out. Just gonna push everything back a little bit. I don't, you know, I never entered my art in any contest. I don't like losing. <laughs> I demand a recount. <laughs> Such a beautiful day. It's been like the oh perfect gosh, weather this is. week. Like sixty-five to seventy-two degrees. 
light breeze. So I'm going in and just hitting everything here. And then what I'm oh. gonna do is I like I like pushing things back and then pulling pulling some more pulling more out. Yeah. Ooh, let me, let me, see this gives it a whole new mood, doesn't it? I like yeah. this. Well, let's go back on top of it, see? Mysterious. You see here? Yeah, you see? Now let's go back on top and we can really shine, start to shine that light on him. What baby? Kelly's wanna go out? He needs to go out. Oh I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry, buddy. YouTube question. Hi, Aaron. I was wondering if you could go into more detail on how to draw paint animals with black fur. Well, you're really, you're, you're, you're painting the animal, the light is reflecting. That's, that's the biggest thing. So when you're thinking about animals with black fur, don't think about black fur. Think about, because the fur generally reflects back, especially the cool lights. And, uh, and, and then it, when, and animals like black panthers which are really black leopards or black jaguars you know they you can still see the spot pattern in their in their in that black fur um there's a lot of really cool aspects that you have to be aware of but really painting black fur is really understanding how to paint reflected light that's what it comes down to you like the blue when it's like that certain blue over yeah. black it looks like the light it's On really black, cool. it's so pretty yeah have you ever tried pottery or art welding um, I, you know, it's funny. We've been, Vedanta and I have been really wanting to get into pottery. We've been watching the great British pottery throwdown. pottery throwdown or whatever it's called. And I did pottery when I was in school and I enjoyed it. I've just never gone back to it. And, uh, I always thought it would be fun to do, you know, one-off little clay sculpture, animal wildlife sculptures and things like that. Just thought it would be really neat. So here I'm going in and just selectively brightening up on top of this dark layer that I just created. Um, just places that I want to pop a little bit more and get a little bit more dimension in that reflected light on that black skin. Yeah, see, I like pushing the value away down like this. This is much better. So you look at that now that we've gotten used to it. Look at that. It's just so much richer. Mm -hmm. I can come in here and kind of hit some areas around the eyes. Martin says gouache is really tricky for him because he's 80% done and it looks so bad. And then he does like one last thing and then it, it all works. It does. That's true. And I, I, one of the, the biggest thing that I always struggled with when I was first learning gouache is the change in value for when it's wet to dry it was always a hard thing for me to gauge there's a really big change in value from light to dark and um and i really struggled with that in the beginning and color i, I struggle a lot of times with gouache and uh trying to keep the color vibrant and not chalky that's a tough one as well i think just um plain air painting in general for me, is impossible. It's but not impossible. Nothing's impossible. I my know, dear. but but it's difficult. It is difficult. And unless you're doing it every day and really getting in a groove. Yeah, but that's the thing. If you do it every day, you will get in a groove. But it is hard. Especially like there's people around, and I like to paint alone. <laughs> and then it's just it's talking about people. You're on the spot, and it's like, yeah. I, I hear you. It's fun. It's in, it's interesting. I've had fun doing it. Especially when you and I do it. But. Um, Zanji says that uh, James Gurney gouache videos are really nice. They're actually they're that's a great example. James Gurney is one of my favorite contemporary painters. He's one of my favorite all around artists, and um, yeah, his gouache paintings are insanely beautiful. And He's such a great example of of a true artist because he takes he takes the most mundane 
things that you would never think to paint and he does these beautiful paintings and i just that's that's a that's a true artist right there so if you're not familiar with james gurney look him up because he's just an incredible amazing artist there's a watercolor um, really knows his artist stuff. that you follow the person that's like effortless I yeah um i can't remember the name um, off the top of my head right now like the most beautiful like cityscapes and stuff like yeah that. um well there's young young hung zong young zong young hung zong that um i've we've been friends for 30 years but he's, maybe that's who it is yeah i love his painting i got one of his they look so there. effortless yeah and razul azadani razul okay razul right. azadani is another friend of mine from disney um and uh, Razul's from Iran, and he's done he, he's done these beautiful landscapes from Iran that are just insane and so effortless. That's the thing. Well, they're not effortless. Like I'm, They I, look that way. They look spontaneous but and fresh. But it's a lifetime of knowing exactly. and again, working at it. Um, Shelly's wondering why Dustin is, why he's the MIA. He's not ill, is he? I fired him. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. <laughs> uh, he has a friend in town, and he's taking the, the yeah, day off. It's a holiday. Yeah. So, taking uh, the holiday off. You know. He's either playing video games or out doing photographs, yeah. right? Photography. Photographing. Mm-hmm. Photographing. Photographing. It's a tec technical term. It is. So when you did caricatures in college, did you work for a company or did you do it on your own? On my own. We, we, uh, my buddy and I, we did it together. And um, we were, we kind of got a reputation. So they would, when, um, what, you know, there's a, within the Jewish community in Sarasota, there was a lot of bar mitzvahs that were happening. And, uh, at, you know, all the kids were basically this, the same age where uh, at the time. And so, well, not all the, all the same age, but there was a lot of 13 year olds coming up. And so we did a lot of, um, we would do one bar mitzvah and then they were really happy. So the next, the next one came along and we do that one. And it was funny because we draw all the same kids and then we do another one after that. It was really, it was a lot of fun. But I mean, after a while, you know, drawing caricatures was not the thing I wanted to do. I wanted to get out and illustrate, be, a, be an illustrator. Yeah. So as she says, I missed it, uh, but did you double the layer, darken the top layer, and then erase out highlights? No, I didn't erase out highlights. I'm just literally, literally drawing on top. So here is, I drew a, a multiply layer on top. of I, I created a multiply layer and just basically sketched over the top of it with a mid-tone. And now what I'm doing is pulling out some of the brighter areas so, that so I now want. you made another another layer and you're doing lights on top yes exactly and these are areas that i want to pop a little bit more all that light so like in here i want the the white of the eye whoops i'm on the wrong i love how you make um the eye focus on a very specific area in your pieces you always do that i try So here, I'm, even though the eye is a little darker than the reference, it's all darker than the reference. I'm trying to create a different feel. Um, trying to create a little bit of light, feel of light hitting underneath the eye, illuminating the, the white of the eye. And this is a good lesson too. When you think about, you know, like the white of the eye, it's really not white. I mean, look at, there's the color that I'm using in the white of the eye. But because of the surrounding color and the, and the value, it feels like it's very bright. And those are always uh, important lessons to remember. Hi, Aaron. I was wondering if you could go into more detail on how to... Oh, I covered that one already. Uh, Aaron, did you work on Fantasia 2000? I did not. It did come to our studio, but I was involved in... What was I working on? In 2000? I was, well, I was working was on Brother Bear? Bear, but I was trying to... But they were working on Fantasia 2000 before that. But I guess it was Brother Bear I was working on. 
He was directing. Yes, exactly. And learning to direct. <laughs> <laughs> so I've just got a couple little touches here. I'm almost done. <laughs> oh, Nick. What? Nick, Nick, Nick. Nick, 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 Elodian. All right, one more. Hing, multiply. What's your favorite color? Teal. Teal, I knew that. But is it like an oceany, like It's like a, it's an iridescence that certain ducks have that I just find beautiful. Mine's green. green. Emerald green. Like wet moss in the sun. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. That's a that's a nice description. All right. Just finishing uh, up. Yeah, they're oh, saying he looks like he's like in this dark forest with like filtered light through the treetops. Yes. Yeah. Whatever it is, it's great. He looks great. Oh, I'll thank you. Yeah, I definitely need to adjust the color on my computer. So once again, I want to remind you guys, if you come in late, um, we've got a big Black Friday sale happening at CreatureArtTeacher.com. We've got several courses that are lower than they've ever been, $15 for a full entire course um, for uh, my uh, painting and procreate, my character design course. Here we go. Are we at the one more thing place yet? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was Martin. Are you an art collector? And what do you think about street mur murals? Uh, I like street murals if they're good. You know, and yes, I am an art collector. I do collect art. All right. Um... Yeah, you're always picking up little paintings here and there. All the time. You, I love supporting artists. I love supporting independent, yeah, artists too. And, and people support me, which is amazing. Yeah. You know, See, like when I nice, did some it's wood, nice to be supported. wood block prints or like my earrings and stuff, but people are always reaching out. And it's just, yeah, it feels nice when people are willing to support you as an artist. So, um, Citizen Siegel says, if you have a successful movie um, you personally directed, why didn't you continue directing? Uh, because I needed a change of pace. Uh, I needed a change of, uh, I was done with that. And I needed to change up my life. I needed to find a new path. I wanted to start, try something new. And I love I loved doing what I'm doing now. I might go back to directing, who knows. But as of now, I'm going to continue to uh, do what I'm doing here. I mean, I love being able to sit down and go, hey, I'm going to draw a gorilla today. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, and turn it into a lesson. You're the director in your own life story, man. That's right, baby. But yeah, I love your persistence of vision um, talk, which you actually did twice last week right i did yeah um 
and you go over all of the how life sh puts you in a in a different path sometimes. Yeah, exactly. And you just you sometimes you just yeah, gotta gotta keep going. You and gotta roll with it. Pursuing you roll, what you love. Yeah. Roll with the punches because it's gonna punch you hard. There we go. There we go. There's a gorilla. Oh. Martin says you need a t-shirt that says, I don't always do a well, one more thing, but when I do, there are always two. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Why do painters use a color similar to black when painting and dislike using actual black? Because actual black tends to suck the color out. You know, even even in dark areas, in, in, in black areas, there's color, and so um, we tend to go towards whatever color that might be, and it makes the black much more rich. You have cool blacks, you have warm blacks, you have neutral blacks, and so it's fine. You know, it's finding those those tones um, that that make the painting, whatever it is that you might be working on, that much richer. Would you ever do a sketchbook project with a Brooklyn Art Library? I think they collect them. Don't That's they? super, super specific. Yeah. Well, because <laughs> they have a whole collection of people's di or um, journal art journals. Oh yeah, I'd love to. That do they that. mail in and they keep them on file and like as a collection. Maybe. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, that'd be kind of. I thought cool. you were gonna do a book at some point of your sketchbook. We are. We just you got. Okay. And like yeah, everything else. It's Dustin just kind of... spent countless. I shouldn't say countless. <laughs> countless hours. Yeah, it's scanning just, uh, sketchbooks. yeah, well, I don't know how many hours he spent scanning sketchbooks, but we'll see. <laughs> Countless? Countless. Just I couldn't care less. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, here we go. I'm done. So, um, once again, go on over to creatureartteacher.com. Let me, uh, let me sign it. There's your one more thing. Let's sign it. You got to sign it. All right, you know. Bingo. Now it's done. Now I can't do anything more to it. So there's our gorilla. This is our reference up here. Bow, bow, bow. Hey, it looks just like him. Yeah, so there's the reference. And you can see how we kind of manipulated it and created our own kind of image. Um, that's fun to do. Aww. I enjoy that. I love him. He's awesome. Thanks. So um, go over to. Oh, I, I got to open those up again. So here we are. Here's our slides. So this one here, um, this is our, uh, our four courses that are on sale right now. We got Lyndon Ruddy's Art of the Storyboard, My Digital Painting and Procreate, Acting for Animation, and Character Design course. Um, that's a ton of uh, courses, and they're only $15 a piece. It's the lowest they've ever been. So go over and check that out. And then also, uh, once again, it's at creatureartteacher.com. And then also, um, we've got three courses that are up for pre-order, uh, Sculpting in Clay by Tony Cipriano. Tony created our uh, sculpting in Maya, or a, a ZBrush course for us, a digital sculpting course. And uh, But his beginnings, when he started sculpting, were all done traditionally in clay. And so we thought it would be really cool for him to do a figure sculpting course for us in clay. And so he's done that. And that, that, that actual course is actually going to be available later today. But you can still get in there and order it at 50% off ahead of time. And then also there's Animal Character Design by David Coleman. Great animal character designer, good friend of mine. Go check that out. It's wonderful. He did it all on paper, which is really cool. And then there's also, uh, by my friend Chuck Williams, How to Pitch Your Ideas. Chuck is a producer in Hollywood and has a lot of um, advice and know-how in getting your ideas off the ground and pitched to different studios. And so for young people out there that have been asking me, how do I get my ideas out there? This is a great course to help you do that. So uh, that's all in pre-order, 50% off, and uh, Sculpting in Clay, How to Pitch an Animal Character Design. Uh, and also, remember, December 12th, I've got my, um, my uh, live workshop coming up. If you go to CreatureArtTeacher.com slash live, um, 
you'll get more information on that. I'm going to be talking about animal character design and then taking that design later on in the day and animating on paper live. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And we'll actually shoot the animation and time it out and play it back and it'll be great. But anyway, thanks Vedanta for today. No problem. That was awesome. I had a great day. I hope you guys have a really great rest of your weekend. Um, have a ball. Put Do something nice. Uh, go out and make some art. Make a gorilla. I don't know. I haven't drawn a gorilla in a long time. That was fun. Um, but definitely go out and put some beauty back into the world. Be nice to somebody. Put your shopping cart away. Um, and I will talk to you. I will see you next weekend or next Friday. Same time. So until then, go out and make some art. And I'll talk to you next week. Thanks. Bye. Bye, everybody. I had fun. I love you guys. We'll see you next time.